You can farm with water catchers, but it's not ideal. It's a bit more expensive and challenging for less output, but there are some reasonable situations where it can be useful, so I'll cover the key ways to efficiently farm with water catchers and vary them based on your tolerance for complexity. This will primarily revolve around efficient usage of water. First, we need to understand how water catchers work. I'm going to focus on small water catchers here because while large catchers are tarp efficient, they aren't spatially efficient and must be placed on the ground. Small catchers generate water every minute, and the amount will vary based on the day and month of the rust calendar. For 6 months of the year, they will generate 3 milliliters every minute, but at times it's much higher. The highest recording I got was 27 milliliters in a minute. Unfortunately though, we must plan around the 3 milliliter figure as it will be fairly common. Secondly, we need to understand sprinklers. Sprinklers consume 2 milliliters per second, but output 15 milliliters every 5 seconds, equating to 3 milliliters per second output. This effectively generates an extra 50% water and something you want to take advantage of. However, this output is divided among all the planters the sprinkler reaches, and remainder values are removed. So to be water efficient, we want to use a planter count that evenly divides that 15 milliliters. That's 1, 3, or 5 planters. And while sprinklers allow us to generate an extra 50% water, they do have a higher risk to waste water. Overwatering a planter will lose the water, but if the sprinkler takes in too little water and it's divided to the planters below a single milliliter each, that water will also be lost. And there is a huge difference. It takes 40 catchers pulling in 3 milliliters a minute to sustain a single sprinkler. This leaves us with three options. One, manually water with a water jug and forgo the 50% extra water. Two, manually trigger a sprinkler only when there is enough water to sustain it. Three, create an electrical circuit to trigger the sprinkler at a sustainable rate. Let's consider the minimum use case for a water catcher farm. Eight water catchers will allow about two batches for five planters each day if they are accumulating at their minimum rate. This stretches to three if you take full advantage of the 50% water bonus. Of course, the batch count climbs significantly if you happen to be in the wetter parts of the rust year. The simplest use is to connect all the water catchers to each other and then ultimately to a water barrel. Then from the water barrel, use a water jug to fill your planters. It's a little tedious, but simple, cheap, and only wastes water if you overfill your planter. You can also connect a fluid switch and pump to your water barrel and out to a sprinkler and only turn on the pump when there is enough water in the barrel, but it will take a very long time to output enough water to grow a batch. In this case, I'd recommend manually filling the planters and then using the sprinkler as a supplement. Lastly is this circuit that toggles the fluid switch and pump on a timer that matches the output of 8 water catchers at 3 milliliters per minute. This prevents wasting water with the sprinkler, but you still need to be mindful of overwatering your planters if they become full. Again, you should manually supplement with water as it will take about 20 hours to fill your planters this way. The circuit requires two timers, two electrical branches, a blocker, and a splitter. The circuit will also require an extra solar panel to power it, but it can be run off a small battery. And while it is interesting and the 50% bonus water is great, I'd personally just manually water to save the resources on electronics and instead place a few more water catchers on the base. Lastly, because you already need to be mindful of water usage, it will be easier to keep your planters in ideal water conditions for your plants. Plants grow at the minimum condition they are experiencing. Most pump-driven farms keep their planters full, but plants hit 100% on water condition only in partially full states. As you're being mindful of water usage and trying to optimize your output per water, you can try to keep your plants growing in those sweet spots. However, this will mean you'll need to compost some fertilizer to put into your planter so you get the ground condition to 100% as well. I hope this has been helpful and thank you for watching.